I don't think that three months ago people even really knew who I was like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's been pretty crazy these last couple of weeks that all the accolades and things that's been coming my way. I guess what's the reaction been like when you get your phone at the end of the game after you have three picks or two picks in a game like that? My family, everybody's always super excited, but the crazy thing about it is like my lady, uh, my mom, my dad, people that's really close to me, they're not really surprised about the things that I'm doing because they always felt like I had the potential to do these things and I, I had the skill set for it just about making the plays. But it's funny to see everybody else, like especially on the media, so shocked, oh, he's doing this, doing that, but I, I don't really feel like it's a big shocker. You were a turnover machine in college. Not many people realize that, all the, all the interceptions. It's just kind of carried over. It just From year one to year two, it's just been a huge, drastic jump. Yeah, I th it's something that I just take pride in, something that I, I feel like I work hard on it on the field and off the field. Like, I visualize making turnovers. Like, I don't really – I mean, I visualize making big hits, things like that, but I visualize turning the ball over because I know that's a – a, a big hit versus a turnover, which one would you rather have? And I feel like that's a bigger stat in the game. So I feel like if I get a turnover every game then, or a turnover every day in practice, that's kind of my mentality. So I feel like that's why I continue to make plays. Where did you get the visualization from? I mean, that's, it can't just come natural. you got to right, right. get it from somebody. I'm, I'm, a real, I'm real big on, like, watching documentaries and stuff. Yeah. So I always, I've been watching, I'm pretty sure a lot of guys seen the document, The Secret and things like that. So The Secret is pretty much saying that if you visualize something and you think hard about it and you kind of, Put yourself in the moment emotionally, like thinking about oh, making this play emotionally, feeling that, then it say that, you know what I'm saying, you'll kind of be attracted to it. And I, it's been working. It's become a reality. Yeah, it's been working, exactly. So I'm kind of, I kind of always just been a visual guy, just yeah. visualizing myself the night before the game, making plays, and they end up happening in the game. Did a Dory steal number three from me the other night? <laughs> I wouldn't say he stole it because at the end of the day, we don't want him catching the ball. So he apologized anyway. I didn't really need it, but uh, I'm just happy to hear that he didn't catch the ball. Who did you look up to uh, as, as a safety-wise growing up? Well, of course, I looked up Ed Reed. Uh, I mean, he was a big guy because, I mean, he was so dynamic. Not only can he turn the ball over, but he can get in the end zone. But, uh, I mean, other than Ed Reed, my favorite team was the Steelers at the time. So, I was always a big Trump Palomalu guy, big Trump Palomalu. But uh, it was crazy because when I first started playing safety, the first YouTube highlight I looked up was Brian Dawkins. Because I always, you know what I'm saying, my family was the Eagles fan growing up, so I always watched Brian Dawkins in. I feel like those those three states probably the three guys I looked up to. When's the first pick six coming? I mean, you've had some pretty good returns in the in these six that you have right now, but you're not getting there all the way. Yeah, I'm. Not, you know, my everybody really been you know kind of bothering me about that, saying I can't get in the end zone, I can't get in the end zone. It's like you're. I just picked the guy five times. I mean, I had four in college, though. So I mean, it's gonna come. Hopefully, yeah. it'll come this next game against Andy Dalton. So I'm, I'm praying for that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna visualize that hey, one. Dave, I'm gonna yeah, visualize that. Mind's eye. I'm gonna try to visualize it. See if I can be a millionaire. That <laughs> hey, just keep thinking about it. If you feel it, it'll happen. It'll Speaking of documentaries, did you watch the, the Ric Flair 30 that for 30 was awesome. last night? I did watch that last night. Yeah. That was pretty good. It was pretty dope. Were you a wrestling guy? Yeah, it's funny. All right, so listen, I was a big wrestling guy when in my younger days. And I had like the Raw versus SmackDown video games. I was a big Triple H, Kurt Angle, all those guys, Chris Benoit. But it was funny because I never really paid attention to Ric Flair like that because, I mean, I think that was kind of before my time. But when I used to watch wrestling when I was younger, I always figured out, like, who is this old guy always getting beat up all the time? I felt like he never used to win. And they used to always get beat up all the time. It's like, it's Ric Flair. He's like a legend. But it was real cool to see the other side, you know, watching that documentary. Yeah. See, he's, he was a real deal. He was a real cool. deal.